What's the good word, y'all? Welcome to the New York Jets Syndicate channel. It's your boy DKB here. And uh, I wanted to break down the Robert Sala press conference from the, I guess, the league-wide ownership annual meeting, something of that effect. Um, but there's a lot of juicy stuff in there that Robert Sala was able to speak on, some things that he wasn't. So let's dive into it. So at the top of the list is Aaron Rodgers, right? What's going on there? If you know anything about, you know, how free agency works and, you know, what you can speak on, what you can't, uh, Aaron Rodgers is contractually still with the Green Bay Packers, which means any conversations for the New York Jets in terms of acquiring them and kind of, you know, going too deep into that conversation leads into tampering which we don't want any problems with, right? We've seen that result in uh, teams losing high draft picks and all, you know, sort of stuff, additional fines, etc. cetera. So um, the most he was able to say was that he's not worried about an Aaron Rodgers still getting done yet. You know, the draft still hasn't come. Um, you know, OTAs hasn't started. None of that stuff yet, right? And so it would be great to have him in the building, um, start getting, uh, you know, acclimated to the environment, some of the young guys on the roster, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there's no urgency needed. And he highlighted the fact that if you have a good rapport with the coordinator, that gives you a lot more leeway, um, in terms of not having, you know, a dead set, <coughs> excuse me, a dead set deadline. Um, and then of course the fact that, uh, for the most part, and this applies to the team as a whole, veterans, rookies it doesn't matter a lot of what's going to happen in OTAs is going to be just base fundamental installation of the offense and defense what we want it to look right what does it look like we can do right now and then once we see that one field product being able to build off of that uh and you see a very dynamic wide receiver room which he called out um and, and you know you it, it looks much different with what we can run, let alone the fact that the philosophy Nathaniel Hackett is going to bring, what Keith Carter is going to bring from a run dimension uh, standpoint is going to be fundamentally different from what we've seen before. And we even have better wide receivers to uh, adjust to that. If you want to, you know, put Corey Davis and Alan Lazard on the edges, for example, as two of the better run blockers you'll find in the league. Um he didn't really have an opinion uh, on any fallback options when it turns to quarterbacks, right? It seems like everybody is full steam ahead on Aaron Rodgers. Joe Douglas is hard working on trying to secure us a trade that won't leave us, uh, you know, strapped for picks. Um, that's not going to leave us in a terrible cap situation with all of the, the great work he's done um, to try to always allow flexibility and maneuverability in the future. Um, and then there was an interesting bit about, uh, him not, um, him and Matt LaFleur, somebody brought up the question, like, what if their talks look like? And he mentioned that, uh, you know, Aaron Rodgers is off the table. Everything else is family, you know, chit chat type stuff. So, uh, we won't hear anything until we hear anything is what it sounds like. And, uh, Joe Douglas will probably be the one to drop the news outside of whoever officially breaks it, uh, like an Adam Schefter or a Trey Wingo. Um, there were some interesting bits there about our own free agency. Uh, Corey Davis sounds like he's going to be on the roster. I won't say he's a lock, but again, as mentioned, with what this offense wants to do, it doesn't sound like there's a, a situation where we need to move on from Corey Davis. I know a lot of people would love to, uh, have that 10.5 million back on the cap. Um, if we end up trading him or, you know, cutting him, etc. but, uh, when you take a look at the roster, especially after moving on from Elijah Moore, Corey Davis is one of the better proven options we're going to get, and especially at his price tag. I mean, we got Alan Lazard for a cheaper rate than we expected. Maybe we got a little bit of discount from the Aaron Rodgers situation. Who knows? Um, but when you take a look at this roster, you're rolling out an offense that has Garrett Wilson as number one, uh, depending on however you want to go about this, Corey Davis or an Alan Lazard at number two, um, you know, throw the other person down into the third string. Miko Hartman could technically be your fourth. Um, and then you're looking at a guy like Denzel Mims. Uh, he highlighted a guy like Urban Charles that may be looking to try to make the roster after moving on from guys like Jeff Smith. Um, so that would be one of the, the biggest pieces. Corey Davis isn't necessarily going to be uh, a huge 
asset that's looked to just be moved right away. Uh, I would expect he's going to be part of the Aaron Rodgers trade. And if not, uh, then we ultimately end up seeing him on the roster. Uh, one of the other people that was pointed out was Carl Lawson. Uh, and he spoke directly to this. A lot of things he had to defer to Joe Douglas. But when it came to Carl Lawson, since, you know, he is a defensive minded head coach and he loves his pass rushers. He did highlight the fact that with what Carl Lawson brings, his skill set, his ability to collapse the pocket and affect the quarterback, get those pressures, pick up sacks, different things of that nature. He will remain on the roster, <laughs> uh, basically. And I want to say he quoted something like, unless he just can't walk and move, he'll remain on the roster. So I wouldn't expect us to move on from Carl Lawson either. And I don't remember if we negotiated his contract, but that may be something we look into in terms of trying to um, potentially increase some cap flexibility. Um, Outside of free agency, Ezekiel Elliott doesn't seem like he's going to be a, a focal point at all for the New York Jets. He was asked about the the interest there. Robert Sala didn't get into any uh, you know negatives or anything about uh, why they wouldn't want him. He pretty much deferred and said that they love the running back room. Brees Hall, Michael Carter, Zan Bonavin Knight, um, or Zanavin Bam Knight, excuse me, um, and I feel like I'm missing a guy. Oh, and then we just re-signed Ty Johnson. So uh, <clears throat> I don't think we have any additional moves made there. I still think that maybe we take a look at an undrafted free agent or one of those final six round picks. Uh, I think we had, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the final six round picks uh, potentially being somebody in the running back room. So we kind of keep a continuous pipeline there. Um, but I did pick up on that. Um, other out external free agents, OBJ, the interest there, they, you know, pretty much punted on that. They always want to find ways to improve the roster. But uh, this wasn't necessarily tied to Aaron Rodgers itself. We know OBJ was on the wish list and stuff, but uh Robert Sala and Joe Douglas, they've had a process for, you know, years now about uh, working on their own free agents and then dwindling down a list from the uh, the guys that are going to be open and available and what their fit could look like on the team to try to maximize not only the synergy that we have, but, uh, you know, try to add a different dimension or element uh, to the team that we already don't have in place. So. One of the things I did like, it did feel as though we were adding a lot more veterans than what we've seen in years past. He spoke to that a little bit, uh, pretty much mentioning that, uh, you know, you look at guys like Dwayne Brown, you look at guys like DJ Reed, um, guys that are still technically pretty young for their positions, you know, <laughs> Dwayne Brown excluded. Um, but generally, they've been targeting veterans that are still pretty young for their positions. Um, and these are guys that still have the work ethic. They're still hungry. They still, you know, kind of have that lust uh, to want to excel out there. And then the fact that from like a leadership standpoint, this will help with uh, the development of the players as well, right? The coaches are saying things the veterans can kind of follow up and be the on-field coaches to a certain degree. Um, and then you have that ability where they're kind of helping some of the younger guys do self-correction, right? Think like Denzel Mims, he caught out on the roster. Irvin Charles is kind of those bottom tier guys they want to develop, but this applies across the board. And, you know, the biggest highlight was the Aaron Rodgers to Zach Wilson situation, Um but nonetheless, it still stands. So um, other news, I, I would say, uh, so we're still searching for our defensive tackles, right? He brought that up. He didn't really know about the Kali Campbell, uh, Kalias Campbell situation. Um, I did think that was pretty interesting. But overall, we do know that he's coming for a visit. Uh, I believe it's this week. Um, and we'll see if he leaves with a contract. I think he visited with the Falcons. And I heard that actually went really, really well. Um, free agency versus the draft for the center position, I think will be a hot topic. Ben Jones still seems like he may be an interest, but ultimately we've been doing a lot of work on John Michael Smith's as well. Um, and it could come down to who's going to provide the best value, right? Ideally, you'd like to have a, uh, a situation where you don't have to force these rookies to start right away, but JMS's whole situation is that he seems like the most plug and play ready guy uh, that you're going to find at the center position. So we'll see which way we end up trying to lean there. There's also some guys we already brought on in free agency that have a little bit of center experience. Maybe they try to, uh, you know, lean into that a little bit instead of finding a, a more veteran proven option. Um, 
Dwayne Brown. They spoke to, you know, his recovery efforts, how well it's been going, how elite he is uh, <laughs> as like an athlete at his position. Makai Becton uh, and his transformation as well. Um, and then really the only other thing they spoke about was some defensive things, right? Turnovers are going to be at a premium for us this season. It's one of the few things we feel like we failed at over the season. And he did highlight what McCall Hartman would bring to the offense in terms of him having elite field vision, speed, uh, highlighted the fact that he was second uh, in the NFL in yards after the catch behind Debo Samuel, who was a guy that the New York Jets really, really wanted. They just weren't going to pony up uh, the, you know, the draft capital that the 49ers were asking for at the time. So uh, all in all, I think it was a pretty solid uh, press conference. We did get a, a lot of... Uh, a lot of confirmation in terms of certain moves that may or may not be made. Corey Davis, Carl Lawson, Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, we got some insight into some of our own players, uh, AVT, McCole Hartman. Um, and then overall, I got a sense of relief that, you know, the New York Jets don't feel pressed at this point in time uh, to, to have to, you know, jump through hoops and hurdles to get Aaron Rodgers on board just, just yet. So uh, we'll see what the plan continues to be. Let me know what your thoughts were on the press conference and I'll catch you guys again. Peace.